Any prayer requests? We would start this morning. Unspoken, yes. Your sister as, as well. Your granddaughter. Her granddaughter is 18. A friend of the family, and she's got cancer. Okay. Yes. Yes, that's right. Your son, Brother Kilns, Brother Bob's son. Let's all bow our heads. Heavenly Fathers, we come before thy throne of grace. Lord, we're thankful, Lord, that your eyes are t is attended, Lord, to thy children, Lord. We have come here this morning, Lord, to worship and praise thee, Lord. But, Lord, also we ask at this time that you look upon these requests, Lord. you even seen it, Lord, before we ever even ask. And I thank you, Heavenly Father, that you know all things. Now, Lord, we commit this service in your hand in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray this morning. Amen and amen. And then have Brother Michael to come lead us in the song service.
2.13, I think it is in the red book. of Calvary, our blessed Savior died, gave his life to save this world from wrong. In his pain and agony for every sin.
Anyone have a number? Two sixty nine. Two sixty nine in the red book. Same book, number 20 in the red book. <laughs> Jesus has a table spread where the saints of God are fed. Disciples came to him, 
thus obeying Christ's command, for the Master called to them, O oh, come and die. There they found their heart's desire, bread and fish upon the fire, was to satisfy the hungry every a song? Welcome, Holy Spirit, we are in your presence, fill us with
Down this road, I can see a bright light shining for me. It's far away, but the pull is strong. Someday, this soul.
Well, I'm a traveling on. I'm a traveling on. To a city I have inside. I'm a traveling on. I'm a traveling on. I've heard the truth and I've seen the lie. Now I know this world and the shape it's in. And we know Jesus is coming again. So I want to hear the truth whenever we can. I'm getting ready for the city. Where there is no sin I'm a traveling on I'm a traveling on To a city I have inside I'm a traveling on I'm a traveling on I've heard the truth And I've seen the light Awake in the morning, I'll have a new day. I love Jesus and I pray. Lord, you show me the truth, you show me the way. Now lead me on to the glorious day. I'm a traveling on, I'm a traveling on, I've heard the truth, I've seen the light, now we're going to the city, where the streets are gold, I'm a going to the city, where you never grow old, I'm a going to the city, I'm going to the city where the lamb is the light. I'm a traveling on. I'm a traveling on to a city I have inside. I'm a traveling on. Cutters are here early. Uh, there's a Nissan parked out in the, fr the very front here. If you would just take a few moments to move the, the car. Who has the uh, gray ni Nissan? Huh? Okay. Sorry. That's all. Brother Elijah, do you have a song? There's a miracle all in the making. Oh, one just for you, the Father.
but she knew she had to reach in. Oh, see, this was her last hope to ever be healed. Oh, so she pressed through until she touched his garment. for you today. 
making and making for you. This morning, me and me and Joyce got up and we I turned the TV on and both both news channels and Canadian ones, CBC and uh, CTV one. The preeminence of the news was the policemen that weren't allowed to go to the LGBTQ parade in Toronto, and with all this other stuff going on that seemed to take preeminence over the whole newscast, people getting blown up and and, and you just you wonder how long much longer can they go like that? It's strong the power of Jesus name it is stronger than any other name how sweet the victory that bore my shame took the burden of my sin
service over to Brother Fred. Let's all stand, change position. Heavenly Father, as we come to this part of this service, Lord, we ever so thankful, Lord, for the songs of Zion, Lord. Thy refreshing spirit, Lord, is able to lift up. But, Lord, as we look into your word, I just pray, Lord, that you would have your way. In that wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray this morning. Amen. Be seated.
again, um, they're going to be cutting the tree as soon as we finish here. So if you're near, if your car is near, I would suggest probably to, to move it away. And, and the woods, well, those that want to will have the woods. The uh, thing that's taking place is we know that the world's always constantly changing. Sometimes not at a rapid pace, but sometimes a little faster than other times. And right now we're enjoying low gas prices, so to speak. Well, that's because the Arabs are at war with, or at confrontation with one another. The, most of the Muslim world, Saudi Arabia and, uh, and other nations are against Qatar. As Qatar uh, has been sponsoring uh, terrorism all around the around the globe, they don't themselves, but they ha they have a lot of money. It's a very small nation, but it's a very very rich nation because it has abundance of oil. And so, therefore, the other Arab nations, in order to put pressure on them, they reduce their price that they're selling the oil, so it forces them to to lose money. So that's why it's not because they're giving us a break, but it's things that are taking place in the, in the Middle East. Uh, about a month or so ago, Tilson, which is a representative for the United States government, went over and met with all the Saudis and the different Arab nations and saying, look, if you want, if you want us to be, to be in hand with the United States, this thing about sponsoring terrorism has to stop. Uh, of course, they can't tell Iran because you're being brawled in the war over there. And so things are starting to heat up on the political side of things in the Middle East, and I'm sure Israel is watching this closely. At the same time, in the Far East, you have North Korea. Kim Jong-un uh, wants to let off another nuclear weapons, and if... Uh, not so much Trump, but he left it to their leaders to decide what course of action to take. And if we're getting near to the time frame, uh, probably, no, I'll have to go over here, I guess. If we're getting near to that miracle war, that has been revealed to us almost 25 years ago. So it's not new fresh manna at this point in time, but it's still good manna because it's things we need to know. And so therefore, as we are getting near to that point in time, and getting near to the week of Daniel. As we look at the scriptures in the book of Daniel and in the book of Revelation, we see that America can no longer be the major player. So something has to transpire in the Far East. How it's going to un unfold, we don't know, because till, till somebody sets off something or things happen, happen, then surely somewhere in time, the kings of the East has to come together. So the winds of force and change up there because allowing that wind to blow in the Far East. But also the wind is blowing in the Middle East. And most of those nations that were around in 2010 when the Arab Spring took, it has gone to different countries all through. And God has allowed that to cause turmoil so the young generation, they can see what's taking place in, in modern, not modern, but in advanced societies, they want the same riches. But they don't know how to go about it, so you had turmoils in each one of those nations. And some of the last ones to touch is Saudi Arabia and a few Arab nations around Saudi Arabia and as well as, Sir as Turkey. But we can see the signs of it, too, changing. So it wouldn't take too much for things to be pushed to the place where we get to that miracle war. It's one thing to know about the secular side of things. 
how society is going to be disrupted and cha- things are going to change. But you and I are more interested in also in what the Lord has for us in this time. And just like er- Israel is being pressured by all kinds of terrors on the outside and, and even some from within, so is the bride of Jesus Christ. But that miracle war, when it does come, it's going to settle a whole lot of things. Israel will have their land. Israel will have their temple. The bride will have the word, and she'll have the gifts. And the things that, that we look like it's maybe going nowhere today, when that time of the miraculous does arrive, I believe that's what it's going to take to bring this bride to completion, to perfection, so that every false things, every thing that is contrary to the word of God or that's against God's word in this hour, God's going to remove. So, yes, there's a better day coming. But we must, in the meantime, live as we're going towards that point of time. And as our brother was saying this morning, Here's this gay pride parade in Toronto. Supposedly the biggest one, I guess, around. And we have our prime minister going to it. We're living in a country that we have liberty. But liberty is not to be used for every kind of perversion. Yes, they're free to choose, but they're not free from the consequences down the road or when God comes on the scene. That will be very severe. They won't be prancing half nude around. I've seen a little bit on the news there. They're just displaying their, instead of saying where well, they are being quietly like the rest of the population, they're noisy and, and, brow, and boastful that way. But it has its day, because when the Lord does come, no politician, no world government are going to tell the Lord, You can't do this. Because when he comes to destroy the sinners from the face of the earth, none of that kind will be in that millennium, according to the word of God. Now, you have things that will rise up among the population and politicians say, well, that can't, you're you're, uh, you're biggest. You're anti this and that and the other thing. And they'll take certain parts of scripture and leave the rest, not touch it. But there's parts of the word of God identifies them. Are we going to go out against them and with clubs and such? No. You leave that be, it has to come to its heights. So when God does judge it, there won't be any excuses. All right? So we'll leave that aside. I thought of maybe this morning looking in review the things that God has done for us in the last six months. It goes back to the dream that I had in 2000, year 2000, how in the classroom, things would be coming quickly. And I know it's Brother Jackson, the, God used his image to portray how things would come quickly. But the thing is, if Brother Jackson didn't say it, most of the movement says we don't believe it. Or they look at it. Something's wrong. Where is the spirit of prophecy? Where is that Holy Ghost that'll show us things to come, not things that has been or has been shown? And so I'd have to say this morning, there's coming a day. Yes, we can all hide. And I remember in the days when God had his apostle on the scene of the different revelations that he brought. I don't know about others, but it didn't take me two weeks to see what he was saying and jump right in it and accepting what God was doing. And from what I can see now, because God had seasoned him for 40 years, people saw the track record and said, oh yeah, we believe that. Because he said it. 
And so therefore it sets up a, st uh, a condition in, in the people. They get a little leery someone else says something. Because there's been a lot of kind of voices saying every kind of a thing on different revelations in this hour that we live in. And I can see if you are, haven't had the Holy Spirit to lead you as you should, that I can see a person being leery and looking at the things that God's bringing in 2017 or in this third watch. That's what really is taking place right now. Yes, there needs to be time. Not everybody hears everything the same at the same time. But praise the Lord. It's, it, it baffles me. I was talking to my brothers and sisters in Australia. They didn't say, well, we're going to wait and see. We'll have a, another look. We'll let you know in time. It may be, and, brother, and they don't say Brother Jackson didn't say that. That shows me when it goes down that avenue that that believer is not anchored. It's not the Holy Ghost that's leading because he, the Holy Ghost, should be the one saying, that is truth to you. Or this is not truth. And if it's not truth, God has an obligation to expose false revelation. Right? Now God allows it for a time for everyone to be tested to see who are you leaning on. Are you leaning on flesh? Or are we leaning on the spirit that he has given us? And I'm thankful that there are those among the simple believers across the world, they're saying, yes, we see what the Spirit of God is doing in this hour. In the last six months, it started around the beginning of this year concerning the three watches of Luke chapter 12. How that it was so simple. Once God opened it, you don't need to be super spiritual, super anointed to see the picture. Because it comes in that those watches are goes hand in hand with when Jesus talked about you concerning the disciples in Acts chapter 1, verse 7. It's not for you to know the time and the seasons. And I'm glad they didn't go say, well, you don't like us because you didn't tell us everything. There's things that God does, holds off till a certain time. But somewhere, because he said that, that it's not for them to know, then reading between the lines, somebody is going to know when the time does come. And it's not something that you pull out of a hat or a, out of here and there. And it's right in the scripture. Times meant centuries. Century came to a close when Israel became a nation. There would never be another hundred years take place. So time comes to an end. When that was dropped in, now, granted, in that same parable, Jesus says, all things, that generation will not pass away till all things be filled. That's up to the day of the Lord. And the generation in 1948 has all but passed away because they, there has to be enough living of a generation to fulfill the ministry at the end and the seven thunders. All right? So therefore, what we've, God has opened up to us made us realize in that parable, yes, he points to the fig tree, but he also points to the leaves. So the time that Israel will be putting forth leaves, if we look at a scriptural event that took place that can be a marker, that's in 1967 when Jerusalem was no longer occupied by the Gentiles. How wonderful. that! But the, the whole thing it was to put the end of centuries 
There it was in Matthew chapter 24, verse 31, 32. How simple that is. Does Brother Jackson have to confirm that? No, the scripture does. So praise God, that was wonderful. That was, then, then when that came about, then he brought us to Luke chapter 12, that there would be three watches. Now Luke chapter 12 does not say in that scripture in verse 38. Luke chapter 12. Well, maybe I could put, the, put it up on the board too. Because he had just finished, he's talking about when he has finished feeding servants in, in the preceding verse. The Lord will come down and feed his servants down here. We well, you know that was done through the ministry of Brother Branham and Brother Jackson. He's still feeding servants, but we're no longer in tutorship because now the fivefold ministry is going forward. But when he finished speaking from verse 36 to 37, he says, watch. He didn't say it was an option. And if you look at it as being, well, we don't necessarily need to see that. Well, I'd have to say, Len, it's no more necessary than looking at the miracle war. Because all these details helps us show the sign along the way. And so he says, but watch. If, uh, if he shall come in the second watch or a third watch, find them. So blessed are those servants. But they have to be watching, not snoring. And if we're looking at those things that's been brought forth in this hour as not important, then I have to say to you that looks that way, you are snoring. You are not watching. You are free to choose to do what you wish, but you're not going to be free from the consequences as we get further down the road. Because those scriptures just as much as important as the miracle war and the building of the temple. Because the building of the temple and the miracle war has to do with the Jews, while this here has to do with you and I getting ready for that time when the Lord does come. All right? So those three, and I know this sometimes that in case somebody never heard it before, where's the first watch? You'll find it in Matthew chapter 25, verse 10. What did he say at that hour? He says, pray and watch. If he said to pray and watch, that he put in some importance on it, doesn't he? Not just, well, you know, watch, just keep your eye open. And... No, he's, he wants us to be attentive because he wants to show us, he's, because we're his friends, he is going to show us things to come. And they're just as important as every other part of the scriptures. All right. So, as the Lord has opened up what the time and the seasons were, he's opened up what the watches were about. And the watches, the first watch, pertains to the ministry of Brother Branham from 63. And it's dealing with fresh, divine Meat, it's the carcass, it's the third pole. It's all pertaining to that. That's what we're watching. Because in reality, when we're saying, well, we don't have to watch, well, I have to say, you, know, you don't even care about the carcass. Because the carcass was not all done in Brother Bram's day, nor in Brother Jackson's day. But there's still yet a lot of things that God is showing in this hour, especially in the last six months. There's a lot of things I didn't know six months ago. Is it of your own doing? God can show a vessel of clay what his word is. If he's in it, he's gonna, it's going to hold up. If God's not in it, and if you, I happen to be a false preacher in your eyes, then God's going to cut this thing to pieces. But on the other hand, where will you stand if it is true? Right? I know a lot of people don't like me speaking in in that kind of a tone or terms. 
if I came and as the things that were brought and said, well, now it would be nice for you if, if, if you could look into this, maybe just see what you think. God never brings his word that way. First of all, if you believe it, you're going to be energized to speak it that way. All right. So now as we came from that point in time, then we're looking at the time where the Lord is dealing with the judgment seat of Christ. Oh, and I imagine this probably touching a lot of people out there. Because Brother Jackson didn't talk about the quick being judged at the same time as the, the dead in Christ, of the bride, it can't be. We can't accept that. Don't look at the, if you're looking at it that way, then you're leaning on flesh. If we're in this hour that we're living in now, the fivefold ministry is not, all the fivefold is, is, is huddling like a, like a five group and they're just walking along somewhere. There's a leadership in that fivefold ministry. And we need the other ministries that are just as very, very important as an apostle ministry. Because there's those that need ministering in a pastoral as being a pastor. Because there's new people that come through the rank even in this hour that needs to know how to live, what God is requiring of us. And one of the basic things that's requiring of us he wants us to love him. But how do we love, love him? From the human heart? No. From, his, from the spiritual heart, if you want to. If you love me, keep my words, keep my commandments. That is above all other things concerning our lives. Because that was God was teaching the Jews when he gave them the Ten Commandments. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul. And what? It was to keep his commandments, his words. That was, yes, the Ten Commandments was the words for that hour in the days of Moses, which was about 2,000 years ago or 1,500 years ago, whatever, back in history. But now, and we, oh yes, we'll believe what Jesus said, but is he speaking according to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 25? Forsake not him that speaketh in this hour. It's just as much as his word as what he spoke here on earth. That's where we're at, brothers and sisters, now. And we can't run to so-and-so and this one and that one saying, well, what do you think? Uh, well, if you're going down that road, you are leaning on fleshly side for a decision, whether you see truth or whether you're not seeing truth. All right. Now it says here, I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick. And I have to say, if you're out there listening this morning, do you know what the quick is? The quick is somebody who's been, that's alive, that received the Spirit of God, that has been quickened, that's sealed with the Holy Spirit. He's not up in glory. Because the word of God differentiates between the living that has been quickened and has been born again versus those that have the new birth that has died and gone on. They are called the dead, the dead in Christ. That's the bride. So when it says here, I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now if Paul's saying, I'm, I'm charging you. He didn't say, well, it would be a nice if you could catch the picture. Before the God and before the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead. Now I dealt with one part, but tonight I might deal with the other part. At his appearing. 
So at his appearing, that's part A, when that judgment seat is to occur, because he appointed a day and a time for the judgment seat, that we, the bride, is to come before him. That judgment seat of Christ has nothing to do with your white robes or others that has eternal life. So we are to appear before him at one point in time. And Brother Jackson and Brother Branham knew it would be at the end time, but they never showed where and when it is to transpire. Check the contenders. They may have been looking towards it, but what God has opened in this hour It transpires in that half hour silence. Prior to the half hour silence, the whole bride is not made up. There could be the, some last ones coming in. Now, they're not going to come in the last minute, last seconds, because there needs to be a certain place where they need to grow up to a certain statue, to a certain measure in Christ. That's for sure. But while Jesus is on the mercy seat, the judgment seat of Christ cannot take place. That's thus saith the Lord, if you want to. Well, you kind of brace it this morning. Well, somewhere you have to look at the scripture has to make scriptural sense. So therefore, the judgment seat of Christ can't be before that seventh seal is, po is broken. Because he has appointed a day and a time that every bride member is to come before him and to be judged not for the salvation, but for your and my reward. Whether I'm up in glory now or I am on the earth at that point in time. So therefore, when that half hour silence starts, yes, there's that angel that comes. And may I say, it says it's a mighty angel. It's not Jesus Christ as being that angel. That is a false revelation. That had been going on since 2005 with the brethren that was out in Brother Jackson's church that was fighting this, saying it was Jesus, was that actual angel. First of all, when it says it's a mighty angel, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16 says, he never took on the nature of angels. So Jesus will never be an angelic being. Period. Because that scripture fits right in there with it. But that angel is to portray the Lord Jesus Christ. To you and I, when that angel comes, we don't see that angel per se. We'll see the image of Christ to us. That's why he is garbed in Revelation chapter 10 as being in the position of Christ, plus the glory of the great eternal spirit that's coming down with it. And I'm thankful, and like I mentioned before, now don't get shaken in your boots because if we appear before him, you can say, thank you, Lord, my salvation is secured. My reward's another question. Because whether how much that he's allowed me to rule over and when the time comes. And so therefore, while he's judging the bride that has now come in that half hour silence, we must all come before the judgment seat of Christ to individually, individually speak with him and he's going to speak to us concerning our reward. And you won't have to go to a secret place or travel here and there because, that angelic, because it's an angelic being representing Christ for that judgment for the living element on the earth. While he's doing that, let's not forget he's got one foot on the land, one foot on the sea. It's universal. He'll come to you 
rather than you go to him. Because he can travel much better than we can. Because a flight to Australia is pretty expensive. Or Norway or wherever in the world. While they're coming back and forth, it doesn't matter. And so therefore, these things, after the time and the seasons, after the watches, then the Lord dropped this revelation in, and that's in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, and part A, and that's dealing with at his appearing. Now the question is, if you're a Bible scholar, or if you have a revelation in you, at his appearing, it's not when he appears to destroy the sinners, so it can't be that. We are then already dressing, coming with him in white robes. Everything's done. So it can't be in his physical second coming. So the only coming that's going to be appearing, that's in the picture, is when he comes for his bride. So when he does come for his bride, that angelic being has been dealing with the living, the quick down here, will already be ready, then he'll be ready to take them because the judgment is, is, is accomplished. To the bride that's in heaven, the deceased bride. And those that look at, well, that half hour of silence, nobody knows. I'd have to say, maybe you might want to look at, and maybe not that we know the exact number, but how many deceased bride saints is there in glory? Maybe two, a couple of thousand? I kind of believe it'd be in the millions, maybe around seven million. And if they are to appear individually between of each one to the literal Lord Jesus Christ in glory now, that's going to take more than six months. Judging seven million people. What is that judgment to be looked at in modern terms? It's an interview on your rewards. And if he's judging that many, then that's why the half silence will be longer than what most may think it is. Now, because we describe it, we're not saying, oh, it is exactly three and a half years. No. We're saying these things, events fall in it. That angel has to come. He has to sound his voice. That voice of the archangel. And what is that voice? It's a message. Then the seven thunders are their messages or their thunders. So while that's unrolling, it, and it's not done in 24 hours because, oh, well, Brother Fred, did you know we have the Internet and they got Twitter and, they, and that can be done in, in very quick order? Not everybody has those means. And so therefore, it's not because you, we all hear it just once. We'll probably need to hear it a few times for it to sink in. How many receive truth and revelation of the things, the thunders, one thunder that, brother, that God used Brother Branham for. Did you catch that in 10 minutes? Sometimes we need to listen once, twice, or three, or, or a number of times. So it'll be a little bit of time taking place. Now, when those thunders are finished, when that judgment on the earth, yes, that will, because if there is 2,000 or 7,000, that could happen in six months, easy. But there's no way it's going to be six months for the deceased saints that are in the million that individually has to come before him and to individually be told, this is your reward. So that's why it's going to take a bit of time. How many, you, I know you all see the picture here, but I thought of reviewing it to reinforce the picture again. And then when that is accomplished, and I'll guarantee you, when we know we're reward and whatnot, and we're still mortal here, we're going to be praying like we never prayed before. And that's why that too had dropped in, in well, maybe over a year or, or two ago, how that angel of Revelation 8, verse 3, is offering the prayers of 
all the saints. That's from when the seventh seal is broke to the brightest on the earth till the days of Adam. Because we find in Revelation chapter 5 where the beasts, or if you want to, the uh, cherubims are holding bowls of prayer. The 12 patriarchs of old are holding the prayer representing the Old Testament. The 12 apostles are holding the prayers of all the New Testament. So if they are holding the New Testament, the New Testament, as far as grace is concerned, is finished when the seven seals broke. But the angel can't offer it prior or around that breaking that seal. He has to wait till we pray the last prayer in this half hour silence. And he'll take all the prayers and offer it up to God. And where is he at to begin with? He's in, in a corner of heaven somewhere, and we've just seen some smoke of these prayers going up. He's at the altar. And it's, I must stress again, it's an angelic being, not Jesus. Why is it not Jesus? He is dealing with the deceased bride saints that are in heaven. But it is this angelic being that's offering it up. And that, and doing that offering, that angel has to be working in a high priestly office. It says, here, we, here he goes again. I'd have to say it's Melchizedek. Because that's the only angel that has a type that was a high priest type that was to type Christ. And if he was to type Christ... This angel, what's he doing? He's typing Christ is offering all those prayers, but it's an angelic being. And if you don't believe that that's so, then bring out your revelation, please. Well, we're not going to know it till later. When? Till the millennium is over? My foot. I don't mean to speak that way, but it's the only way sometimes to get things across. If you go... And you put it so softly, I hope. Now, I, I want to say something. I hope you catch the picture. You know, I don't want to. My, my goodness. When the Lord spoke in the Old Testament, he spoke sometimes pretty stern. Jesus at times spoke pretty stern, but there's other times he preached with love too. So there's both sides of the, of the situation. All right. So now that, that judgment seat, we believe it to be in that half hour silence. Because when that half hour silence does end, when we're talking about the things here and how much time, we're not saying, well, we measure it here, it starts here, the war finishes, Ezekiel 38, 39, we're going to measure exactly three and a half years we're not saying that. If you're using that for an excuse to down this revelation, somewhere God's going to catch up with you. But we're saying these events belongs in there, and you can't squeeze that in six months or a year. There's other scriptures that could prove approximately how long it's going to be. Now, in that half-hour silence, when it ends, then Jesus comes down, when he's appearing, and when he appears, prior to as, at the, his appearing, and now we're in First Thessalonians chapter four, verse sixteen. And the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. That started in 1963. And that will go on till the voice of the archangel when the seventh seal is broke. And when that archangel has finished his work, then the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then we that are alive, that's your quick, that had just gone through, the judgment seat of Christ, and remain shall be caught up together with the Lord in the cloud to meet him in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. 
we that are alive at that hour, the dead in Christ rise first. They get their change of their body. They've been up in glory in the spirit realm, but they have to come down on the earth to receive their body. They are raised first. We are alive, are changed in a twink of an eye, and we get our resurrected body. Now we are a candidate for the actual marriage. While we are in this fallen body, we are betrothed to him. But the wedding of the whole bride takes place in the air when we meet him in the air. Uh, you see what I'm saying? Because we're, he's going to marry a bride that's like him, that has a resurrected body, that has its full measure. She's like him. The whole bride as a whole is just like Christ. Christ has all the attributes and everything of the great eternal spirit. But the bride is invested in her of all the things that Christ has that she's going to represent to be a bride that's going to be meet and fitted to be wedded to her husband. And the wedding takes place not at the marriage supper, at the rapture. All right? Now, oh, time's going away. I'll have to touch some things there later tonight. When the rapture does take place, According to Matthew chapter 24, one shall two be sleeping in the bed, one shall be taken, and the other one left. Two be working in the field, one shall be taken, the other one left. Why is it speaking in those terms? That is not a new revelation. That God has already revealed through an apostolic ministry already. It's universal when the rapture, when he sounds the trump. Now remember, that trump, at the sound of his voice, the dead is going to raise. But now we're talking about the dead is going to be raising concerning the bride. When he sounds that last trump for the bride, that trump, then the dead, the dead in Christ will rise first. And we, we are alive, are the ones that are going to be sleeping in the bed or working in the fields. He's not going to blow the trumpet. Now I'm over here in North America, it's daytime, I'll blow it now and then then they wait around till later on it wears night down in, in China, and now they're coming to daytime, I'll blow it then. No, it's done all at the same time. It's universal. So, when he sounds the trump, it's at that one moment. But when he blows that trump, we are all, the dead in Christ rise first, we are alive, we're going to be changed in the twinkling eye, and we meet him in the air. If I had asked the people, the brothers and sisters, 10, 20 years ago, most of us thought we we're going to actually meet Jesus in the air and says, thank you, Jesus, for giving me a resurrected body. I know I'm putting it ab living here a bit. But when you start looking at the reality, somewhere as we lose sight of the dead in Christ rising first, if there were only a couple of thousand, yeah, that could be possible. But if there's seven million, how close do you think you can get to Jesus? Is he going to spend a whole bunch of time so he can shake hands with everyone in the air before we go through the wedding supper? No. Because the things that are terror inspiring on the earth requires it to be happening pretty quick. So, the the scripture was not intending we meet him personally, but we meet him in the spirit realm where he's at. That makes sense, right? All right. So at the rapture, as each one will be raised to meet him in the air, 
we will all come from the different parts of the world from where we grew up. I mean, you, you might have traveled to, to, to Cali not California. We don't want to go there. Uh, at, that, at that hour, it might have California probably be gone. But anyway, whether it is or it isn't, I'm not saying it is. So when we are raptured up in the air, we go up from whence we are born or living, living at the time. In the second coming of Christ, from what we spoke about last Sunday, that when the parable of Matthew 25, and it's a parable, remember. You see it as a parable, not reading just the literal words. In Matthew chapter 25, verse 31, 32, Jesus is coming down. He says he's going to separate the sheep from the goat. He's coming up to set his government, and we are going to be sitting on thrones at the same time in our countries as he's judging the sheep in Israel. We are judging the sheep in whatever country we come from. So it is no big feat if we went up over here in Canada, then you're going to come down back in Canada when the Lord comes at the, at the end of the, the day of the Lord. How many see See the picture? So it, it goes hand in hand. Where we went up, we went up in the rapture. We're not meeting him in the air. Then, when we return later on in, after the day of the Lord, then we are coming down to the places where we came from. And the judge, now, I know this is, if, if you're on the internet, if you never looked at it, or maybe you don't have the means to look at it. In the last 10 years of Brother Jackson's life, when he did touch about the judgment seat of Christ, that the millennium starts, he says that judgment of the sheep, sheep and the goat is what starts the millennium. And when he sits on that throne is what starts it. He can't be sitting in that 45 days because otherwise his reign would be longer than a thousand years. So when he sits on his throne, we sit on ours where we're at and we'll be judging the, the nations, separating the sheep from the goat at that time. I'm glad the Lord had put into the scriptures like the one in Revelation chapter 3, 21. And to him that overcome, I'll grant him to sit on my throne. Yeah. How many can get into a, now that holies of holies is only 20 cubit by 20 cubit. I said 20 feet last week. My mistake. I, I can be wrong, but you, it, it doesn't destroy the picture. It's, I was trying to portray, it's a small room. In those that use the English measurements, it's 30 feet by 30 feet by 30 feet. And that would be a smaller room than what we have here. You can't even put 500 in that holies of holy, let alone the whole bride multitude, so you can't take that literally. If we can't take those things literally, that is the same thing as in Matthew chapter 25, verse 31 to 32. You can't take that literally either. Because when he does come and he sits on his throne, does it not say in Isaiah chapter uh, 9, verse 6, the government is on his shoulder. And the government is not just over the government of Israel. He's the government of the whole wide world. And the immortal Lord Jesus Christ is not everywhere present, nowhere absent. But the great eternal spirit is. He's everywhere present, nowhere absent. And when heaven comes down, there are two, I mean, if we're going to look literally things, when he comes with the bride, he's coming with the armies of heaven. One part of the army is the bride. The other one is the angelic beings. They're in the order of 50 million or 100 million angels. Where are they going to fit? Well, they're in the spirit world around. Yes, but <laughs> how close can they get? There was, yeah. Okay, maybe I'll deal with concerning in that day of the Lord, what the function of those angels do, because it is summed up 
as we would look at chapter Revelation chapter 20, verse 1. And I'll stop for, for this morning. But these are the things that the Lord has allowed us to see in this hour. Do we need to know these things? It's just as foolish to think then it's not that it is going to happen. But if there be a Trinitarian in heaven and a, a bride believer that knows the Godhead, and that Trinitarian says, well, where's the other two? It's going to look foolish. He won't be there. It's the same we get to heaven. Well, when is my turn to sit on the throne with Jesus? That's just about it, just as foolish as that Trinitarian saying, where's the other two? Because it shows that we're going to be ruling and reigning is universal. I don't know what else God may have down there. I don't, know, I don't even know. I only knew what, or know what God has brought to this hour. I don't have nothing in my mind what God may do after this. I didn't know that to begin with when the time the season began with. I had not that in my mind at all when he came, nor the three watches, nor the judgment seat of Christ within that half hour that is done in two parts, the quick in the earth and the, the living, he's, he's judging them in glory. Plus, I didn't get just to finish it this morning. At his appearing and his kingdom. That's two periods of time. One is for the rapture. And the other one is concerning when he physically come to rule and reign. He's going to judge them quick and dead. Well, who are they going to be? There can't be. that The bride's already. Yes, but put your spiritual cap on. Remember. They're coming before to, to be told what the reward is. The quick, when he opens the millennium, is those that have been sealed with the Holy Ghost, aren't the 144,000 sealed? Isn't the woman sealed? They're not angels. They don't have resurrected bodies. That's your quick. And the white robes don't have their resurrected bodies. That's the dead. There is not on an individual basis, but there is overall, they all have the same reward. And that would bring in uh, the parable of Matthew chapter 20, which we'll deal with tonight. So, I, I know this is not the simplest thing to look at what I'm speaking here this morning. But somewhere there has to be somebody in the bride can see what is transpiring in the hour that we're living in. Do we need to know this? Yes, we do. Is it going to save you? No. No more than knowing about the miracle war. And I'm going to touch on the two days there tonight because that's, that has lifted up his horn again, trying to influence people that the two days are something else besides it's the, the penalty is over in 2004, which is the false revelation. But I'll deal with that tonight. Satan is pretty cagey. Satan is quite intelligent. He'll make things look so good till a scripture or two will trip him up. But I'm thankful that the Spirit of God is able to spring the traps of Satan in the hour that we're living in. Well, you still happy? I think from here on in, whatever time just left, I'm just going to preach John 3.16. Would you all love that? I can get enough of that when I'm listening to the 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 things that are on the internet, 
concerning the denominational preachers went on, or on the radio. Uh, Sometimes we have a Christian station here when I'm driving. I'll put it on, see what, what they're up to, what they're doing. They're just playing with the simple gospel. You and I are so far, God has brought us so far beyond what they're ministering. That, and we're talking about those that has a Doctor of Divinity degree. But they can't be born again. Or not in the bride, anyway. All right, let's just stand at this time. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word in the hour that we live in. I just pray, Lord, that broken as it was, I just pray, Lord, you will paint the picture to my brothers and sisters. I thank you, Lord, for truth in this day and this hour. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Now, Paul, uh, maybe you could end.